Okay, here we go. So going through the last part of this, hopefully we can get from 95 all the way to 108. Um, first, starting off with 95, we have a triangle. It's asking us to find area. So we have to use our formula for area of a triangle. Our area for a triangle is one half face times height. So on here, area equals one half base times height. Well, what is the base and height of this triangle? Again, it doesn't matter what side you use as the base. So pick the side that is vertical over here. And the change vertically from negative two to positive four is six units. So that's gonna be our base. Our height is, so how many units does it change from here to there? Eight units. So we have a base of six, a height of eight. Plug it in, one half times six times, oops, times eight. That's gonna be 24. So that's B. Our 96, on a coordinate plane, a shape is plotted. Again, I would recommend graphing this. Remember, for the EOC, you actually have graph paper given to you as part of your scrap paper. If you use up all the graph paper, but you have lots of space on the blank paper, ask for more if you need it so that you can get another sheet of graph paper. Again, there's extra in the room, they will give it to you. On this one, I would plot these points first just to see where they're at. So three, one, one, two, three, one. Then we have zero, four, one, two, three, four. Then we have three, seven. Then we have six, four. Now, my drawing might not look perfect, but our actual shape is what shape? You're right, it is a rhombus, but even more specific. So it is actually a square. If we look at the sides here, each one of these goes up three, over three, down three, over three, down three, over three, and back three, up three. So on here, the slopes are opposite reciprocals as we go around, making right angles. We move the same distance each time. So this is a square. Now, since it's a square, we should be able to figure out the area a little bit easier. Take one of these sides and make a right triangle out of it. So three units by three units. Well, if this is a three by three, then the hypotenuse would have to be three radical two. So each side of the square is three radical two. For area of the square, we're doing base area base times height. All of them are the radical two. Multiply the whole numbers, three and three is nine. Multiply the two radicals. Radical two times radical two is just two. And then nine times two is 18. A is our answer. The next one, it wants it, us to estimate the value. So which one is the closest to the correct estimate? Well, our formula calls for base area, which is the area times the height. Well, our, our diameter here was 13. So our radius would be 6.5. So plug these values in, 3.14 times 6.5 squared times 10. Look at our options. Which one do you think is gonna be the closest estimate? Should be C. Because they just basically took off our decimals. So we have three, instead of doing 6.5, they just did six, six squared is 36 and then 10. So C is a good estimate. On 98, this one, they gave us a lot of information. They told us the tree is 20 feet. They told us that the trunk is one foot wide. They told us that the lowest branches are three feet above the ground. They also told us that the base of the branches at the widest part is seven feet. Then they asked us to say, what shapes could we use to estimate the volume? Well, we can break this down into two parts. We can break it down into the trunk that's exposed and the branches up top. 
what two shapes do we have? So think of an evergreen tree. Look at the diagram. What two shapes, what two three-dimensional shapes would that be like? Cylinder and a cone. So we have a cylinder and a cone. The cylinder is like our trunk and it has dimensions with a diameter of uh, one foot and height of three feet. So you can probably squeeze that in over here, three feet. And then the cone, that's the top part. That's all of our branches. It has a diameter of seven feet and height of, we got to subtract, three minus 20 is 17. That's it. That's all he wanted as an answer. So what two shapes? Describe them and give dimensions. All right, 99. All right, they gave us a pond. They wanted to estimate the volume. What shape do you think it looks closest to? So what three-dimensional shape? They gave us a side view, which pretty much looks like a half of a circle. The top view, it's a little bit rougher. That, right? That is horrible. Let's try that again. So what three-dimensional shape? I draw it three-dimensionally. It's kind of like a, what? Half of a sphere, which is a hemisphere. Which one of these equations is a hemisphere? B. Again, a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed, hemisphere is two thirds pi r cubed. On number seven, again, what shape does this one look like? Yeah, it looks like a cone, right? So we have volume equals one third base area times height, they gave us a height. The other value they gave us though was the, the diameter. So we have to split that in half. So volume equals one third pi. We got to split that in half. So let's see, 31.416, oops. Split in half. Fifteen point seven zero eight, and then again the height was thirteen. Multiply everything out, so times thirteen. Oops, oops, wait, 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 wait! Don't times thirteen yet. Take that back. I have to square this first. Square it, then times thirteen, then divide by three, then times by pi. And they just want us to round to the nearest whole value. So this is our answer. 3,359 cubic centimeters. All right. Did you go back? No. Got it. Okay. All right. Answer 3,359 cubic centimeters. Sorry, my voice is kind of rough today. No, I, I just have horrible allergies and <clears throat> I'm trying to get a sinus infection, I think. But so I'm trying to get a sinus infection, I think. My voice is I'm not really trying to. I'm trying to prevent it. I'm being sarcastic. Oh. Oh. My body's trying to get it. I'm I want to get rid of it. Uh, 101, given, given, this, given the size of the mass of each of the uh, cubes x and y, how many times is the density of cube x greater than the density of cube y? All right, this one is bringing a little science into it. You guys remember your density from, from science? Mass over volume. 
So they gave us grams. They gave us one side of our cube. So we got to figure out the volume of our cube so we can divide to figure out our density. On the first one, the volume is just going to be, since it's a cube, we could just do one cubed, which is one. This one, two cubed, which is eight. So for density, this is four over one, which is just four. For this one, density is two over eight, which is one eighth. So how much bigger is four than one fourth? 16 times. You have to do 16 times one fourth to get four. On 102, country X has a population density of 250. Sorry, 250 people per square mile. The total population of the country is 150,000. Which geometric model could be the shape of country X? So for each one of these, you would have to first find your area. So for A, we have a parallelogram. We're doing area equals base times height. So 25 times 25, which is 625. Let's take the 625. Oops. You get 240. It's close, but not quite. The next one, rectangle. Again, same formula. Oops. We got 15 times 45. Well, I don't even really need to try this one because I'm dividing by a bigger number. I'm going to get an even smaller value. So that's going to be further away from 250. Again, I want to get to 250, so that's not it. For C, a right triangle with a leg that is 30 miles long and a hypotenuse that is 50. Well, I'm going to need both legs to find my area. What's the other leg? Thirty, forty, fifty. It's our three, four, five times ten. So for this one, the triangle is times. So one half base area times height. Okay. Good luck. So we got twenty times thirty, which is six hundred, and that gives us two fifty. So C is our answer. All right, 103. A hemispherical tank filled with water has a diameter of 10 feet. The water weighs 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. What is the total weight of the water in a full tank to the nearest pound? So, first, volume or thirds pi r cubed. This is the volume formula for a sphere. So to make it for a hemisphere, what do I have to change? Yeah, four thirds has to become two thirds, all right? They gave us a diameter of 10 feet. So our radius is five. So we got two thirds pi five cubed, five pi, That'd be 83, three pi times pi. And we get 261.8. Again, that answer is not there because this is only volume. We need a weight. So we have to multiply by that 62.4 times 62.4 gives us 16,336 which is option A. 104 is kind of the same thing. They gave us a uh, mass per cubic meter. They told us the circumference of the oak tree. So on here, we're doing volume equals base area times height. We don't know our radius though. Instead, they gave us a circumference. Circumference equals two pi r. They said the circumference. We need to solve for the radius. So divide off the two pi. Now, when I did this one in my last class, I forgot to put parentheses around the two pi when I plugged it into my calculator. You might want to multiply out that first. So instead of having two times 3.14, you're doing like just 6.28. So if you divide 
it might be easier to get a correct answer. Oops, I almost made another mistake. Point seven one six. Plug that in. The height they told us was eight. So times eight times pi. Again, that's our volume. We need to take that and multiply it by the weight, which was 752, 752, which is 9694, just option B. All right, the next one deal with modeling clay. We have containers which are in the shape of a sphere. We're making them out of the moon. We want to know how many containers we need. So two different volume formulas, pi r squared times height, and 4 thirds pi r cubed for the moon, because it's a sphere. We know that the radius is 0.5. The height is also 0.5. You multiply that out. That's 0.3927. On the other one, the radius is one. So we multiply that out. That is 4.1888. Divide the two. And you get it goes into it 10.6 times, round up to 11. So you need 11 containers to make the model. On 106, Mr. Uh, planted four types of soybeans on his land in order to compare overall cost for planting and harvesting. The crop harvest. The table shows the number of acres planted, the cost per acre, and the number of bushels of soybeans produced for the different types of soybeans. Regulations specify that Mr. Uh, Fatnat cannot devote more than 80% of a field to one particular type of soybean. He wants to design a field so they can harvest the most soybeans the lowest cost, what are the best design plans? All right, I don't know. There's been times where I wonder who in the world made this review. All the other questions that we did today, I thought were great questions. This one, they're not gonna write, ask you to write an essay about, I mean, they didn't really want an essay, but. There's a lot of explanation, a lot of information there. That's not going to be a computer-based test. That's, that is insane. All right. Yeah, no. If you skip that, hopefully everybody skip that because that doesn't make any sense. Why that be on there? All right, 107. This container is composed of a right circular cylinder and has a right circular cone. So which is the closest to the surface area of the container. So we got what looks like a silo. We have a cylinder with a cone on top. They wanna know the surface area of it. So all right, so what things do we need to include? We need to include one base. We need to include the lateral area of the cylinder and we need to include the lateral area of the cone. We don't need the other top base of the cylinder, nor the top base of the cone. So formulas. Let's start with the cone. Lateral area for a cone was found by doing pi 
URL. So it's really cool. Okay. Then we had lateral area for our cylinder was our perimeter of our base, which is also known as circumference. So uh, diameter times pi times the height. And then we had our area of the base is gonna be pi r squared. So those are the things that we need to do. All right. Our radius for this cone is the only thing that we're missing. And that's gonna be 12 because it's gonna be half the distance across. So we're gonna have pi RL, so pi 12 times 13. plus diameter, let's see, it's 24 times pi times the height of 10, plus the base area, pi, the radius again was 12 squared. So we have 12 times 13, 256 pi. We have 24 times 10, which is 240 pi. And we have 12 squared, which is 144 pi. Add all those up. That's 540 pi times pi. Which rounds out to D. Last one. A farmer wants to build a new grain silo. The shape of the silo is to be a cylinder with a hemisphere on top, where the radius of the hemisphere is to be the same length as the radius of the base cylinder. The farmer would like the height of the silo's cylinder proportion to be three times the diameter of the base of the cylinder. What should the radius of the silo be if the silo is to hold? Whew. So we want First, individually, we have this cylinder, this volume, is found by pi r squared times height. The hemisphere, that's what's on top, is two thirds. Pi r cubed. Farmer wants the height of the silos cylinder to be three times the diameter. All right. When we know, so for h, this is the part that's tricky here. Diameter is found by 2r, right? And we're taking that and multiplying whatever we get for our diameter times three. So we're going to have 6R for our height. So we're going to plug this all in, which gives us the total volume in terms of pi is equal to pi R squared times 6R plus, man, I need to move this over. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna rewrite this down here. I need more space. R squared plus two thirds pi r cubed. All right, so first, let's go ahead and simplify our sides here a little bit. Or actually we have pi on every single side. So we have pi here, pi here, and here. We can go ahead and divide pi off and cancel that off right away. Two, two, five, zero, zero. Uh, let's see, r squared times six r, that becomes six r cubed. On this side, we have two thirds r cubed. 
We could combine these two, add them together, which gives us six plus two thirds. That's gonna be six point six repeating. If we change it to a decimal, divide it off. So we get three, three, seven, five equals R cubed. Hit cubed on your calculator and you should get your final answer. A 15. And that is the entire review from the district. All right, like I said, tomorrow we're going to do some other review. Um, I have some stuff printed off for class, but I'm also going to use something online. So we'll see how that goes. Um, it's another thing that the district made. It's like a practice test. There's a 34 question non-calculator and 34 question calculator. We're going to look at the non-calculator part tomorrow, but that's what we're going to look at tomorrow.